right, everybody, after a brief break, we are now back to the Dry Brook and Asopus Valley. It is good to be back. My move is complete, and I am slowly starting to get myself back into the game, and this is the start of it. I recorded what you're about to see over the course of a few weeks, so it's a little spotty, a little bit all over the place. I've been working off camera quite a bit to try and fill in a lot of these gaps that are left in, uh, in on this map. And uh, I think largely, for the most part, the remainder of this map is probably gonna be built off camera. And I'll probably bring in maybe another one or two episodes of just detailing, but I think for the most part, a lot of the rest of this build is just gonna be off camera because a lot of it is just filling in these big gaps. And I don't know how interesting some of it is gonna be because it's a lot of background building. Uh, but today we do some work on two areas that have been kind of bothering me a little bit here and there uh, on the map. And the first one is right here across from the tourist station. And uh, we're going to put in a motel and a used car sales lot or a car salesman place. Uh, so these are just a couple places that I figured would take up a lot of space, a lot of real estate, and, and kind of help fill in these gaps a little tiny bit, uh, which is really helpful. And uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do uh, with some of these areas that are beyond uh, the bridge that's off to the right and uh, some of the stuff that's further down this road. This main strip, you can kind of see, uh, you could see it for a while, like into the distance. Uh, so I don't know if I need to reshape the, the road so that it kind of bends out of view or um, I need to add some other details and stuff like that. The thing is, is that I really don't want to spend a lot of time or a lot more time detailing and adding uh, like a whole bunch of more strip malls and stuff like that on this on this road but at the same time it feels kind of lazy to just put a bunch of forest around it and I keep going back to like looking at work that I did on the P&B and um, some other builds that I've done and I kind of feel like when I look at that that some of it feels rushed like it was a little bit lazy uh, that I could have added some more stuff in the background and I just didn't so I'm kind of getting that feeling here, but at the same time, I just don't know how worth it it is to, to continue on too far beyond the right of way. So I don't know, maybe you guys can give me a little bit of insight and, and, and uh, feedback on that. Let me know how far away from the tracks you think that I should build before I kind of start making it more just or tapering it off into like the wilderness or, or something like that, uh, because I just I don't want to kill the, the map with um, details and stuff that are really not adding to it you know i'm trying to avoid this this sort of uh what would you call it like um uh rate of return or return on investment or whatever you know like i'm, I'm putting more time into something that is really just inevitably taking away from the rest of the game experience you know and i could be focusing my attention elsewhere um but anyway you know let me know what you guys think about that um and I pretty much just talked my way right through that hotel build. So you pretty much got the idea of what I did there. Put it in a swimming pool. I used a couple of these uh, hotel buildings and, and uh, angled them together to make it look like it was one big building instead of two smaller ones. And I think they're far enough away from the, the train tracks that the effect is there. You're not going to really notice that the two buildings are combined. So I think that that's fine. And uh, it looks pretty cool. It looks like a pretty cheap, sleazy motel, in my opinion. And that's sort of like what I was going for with this uh, with this area. So... Um, I like that. It, it fits the, the the physique, I guess you could call it, of the DBEV. Uh, so then I'm just uh, throwing some more details down, and then I'm going to move on to uh, this sort of car salesman lot area. Um, so I think I'm going to talk a little bit right now about the future of this channel. I don't really want... I don't like when YouTubers talk about that kind of stuff, because it, it's not... It's not good. You guys are here to watch videos and, and, you know, watch what I do and stuff like that. So I try to avoid doing that. But right now in my new job and my new life, I have like, it's just crazy right now. I'm not finding a whole lot of time to make videos. So at least for a little while, videos are going to be a little bit sparse. And I'm kind of thinking I might get into doing more live streams a little bit more frequently. So I haven't totally ironed things out, but... I'm thinking maybe I might do like one live stream a week starting in April and see how that goes and try to intermix videos where I can. And that's just because live streaming is a little bit easier. There's no post-production. I kind of just can sit down like I am right now and just talk to you guys and do some building. Um, so I'm going to try to mix that maybe. This is just a tentative idea that was just kind of floating around in my head on the train uh, on my way home this evening. Um, so I might try to mix in some, some live streams. Um, more live streams with 
a few build videos here and there. And really my main goal right now is to wrap up the debev. I'm so close to the end of this map and I don't want to rush the rest of it. I'm, I'm not going to rush it, um, but I'm getting really close to the end of it. And as I had just said a few minutes ago, it, it some of the stuff that's left might be better to do during live streams just because it's not necessarily good video making stuff, but at the same time, some of you guys might be interested in seeing what I'm doing in terms of like filling in some of these um, like residential neighborhoods and stuff like that in the background. Um, so that might be something that I might try to integrate into uh, into some streams and stuff like that. But again, this is just some ideas that are, are kind of floating around in my head and um, just just trying to get the the debev wrapped up and and uh, ready to go so that maybe by the summertime it'll be I can have it released I can have like a good assortment of sessions built for it and uh, and have the, the the freight cars and the locomotives and all the reskins and stuff like that that I want to include with it uh, ready to go uh, so that's that's my main focus right now um, but I also want to get in back into the uh, the PNB and I also want to start a series in trains 19 and I think the trains 19 series might end up actually being a, uh, a live stream series just for the sake of, again, my time. Um, again, that's something that I'm thinking about doing and I'm going to have to kind of feel it out as time goes on. I'm still trying to settle into a new routine and figure out when I have time uh, and when I can record and when I can live stream and, and that sort of thing and when I eat and sleep and do all those other things because right now it's really, really tricky. Um, so those are some things that are on the agenda. PNB and uh, Trains 2019. And uh, stick around to the end of the video because I actually have an announcement to make about Trains 2019 uh, that I think all of you will be interested in. I probably should have said that at the beginning of the video, but uh, I'm saying it now. So stick around to the end. Uh, during the cinematics, I'll, I'll talk about a little, little something special that I'll be doing uh, with Trains 2019 pretty soon. Um, but anyway, that's sort of my my view right now and what I'm gonna try to do. I'm not gonna totally disappear You know, I'm, I'm still doing this sort of stuff, but there's gonna be a good chance that uh, uh, There might be a bit of a dip in content for a little bit here and there just while I still try to get settled in and, and that sort of thing Anyway, so what else are we what is else is there to talk about the debev? So some stuff that's left to be worked on on here clearly this area is gonna be wrapped up um, by the end of this episode this uh, area off of the the main line by the passenger excursion area um, And uh, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. These are some cool little details that I found on the download station Thanks to 44 willies as some of you guys know him on my uh, in my streams and on my discord. He pointed me out to uh, search the download station for uh, the term rooftop and I searched DLS for rooftop and uh, Came up with these air conditioning units. There's some really cool signs um, like billboard type signs like not billboards, but like different types of rooftop signs that look really cool um, Antennas and water towers and stuff like that So do yourself a favor get on the download station and search rooftop and just download all of those assets I can't remember who the creator was who who made them. I'm sorry about that. I didn't didn't note it down um, But check that out. There's some really great things in there to, to do a little bit of extra detail work on, on rooftops especially for plain rooftops like like you see here on the this car shop uh, there's really not a whole lot going on there and, and somebody like me who plays the game kind of from an aerial perspective, you know Looking at the rooftops pretty frequently So it's nice to have a little bit of detail there and not just the big gray mesh, you know blob or whatever. So uh, I, I Recommend searching the DLS for for those rooftop uh, assets definitely worth it um, So yeah moving on that uh, this is we're gonna wrap up this section I think I place all the cars down off camera and some of these other details because God knows you don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. I don't want to do it, but placing cars down is uh, is a necessity, and I think I just pretty much cut the camera in a second, and you'll see them all kind of populate in there. Um, I tend to do that off camera just because it's so, so irritating. I think you'll agree. Um, so after we detail this area a little tiny bit, there's another section which uh, is behind the downtown area uh, that we're going to work on. And I'm particularly fond of that area, and I can't can't wait to kind of jump over to that. I think it's coming up in the next clip in the next couple of seconds. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I kind of had a little bit of a difficult time, I guess, tapering out of of this lot and trying to find the right assets um, to populate it with. There wasn't like a good car carrier model, or uh, some of the tow trucks looked a little a little bit dated. But you know, I'll spend some more time off camera, like looking for some of these details and some of these. Uh, some some other assets that I can kind of populate in there. All right, so now here's the uh, here's probably my favorite part. Uh, we are now back over to uh, the main downtown city area, 
And uh, this has been an empty area that I've been planning to build in for a long time. And for some reason, I just haven't, I just didn't get to it until now. Uh, so I wanted to save this area. I've been saving it off to the side uh, to, to use for another park. And there's a lot of parks on the, on the DBEV already. I think this will be the third or the fourth one. Um, the DBEV has got plenty of parks. There's no shortage of them here but uh for some reason on this map it's just been really inspiring me to to build like different types of parks and um it's one of those things that kind of is missing from a lot of trains maps um probably because they're not very train related you know it's just an auxiliary piece of a map who really wants to take the time to to build and decorate something like that um when it's not directly related to to actually running and operating trains or anything like that so there tends to be a bit of a lack of them, but for some reason I've been really inspired to do a lot of the, these park builds on this map. And um, this one is partially based off of um, the mall in Central Park. And I don't really know why that came to mind when I started this one, but that's just sort of been where I've drawn my inspiration from. Uh, if you're not familiar with the mall in Central Park, uh, you should do a quick Google search and look it up, and I'm sure you're going to recognize that it's been in so many movies and and uh, photographs. It's, it's a very well-documented part of Central Park, and uh, it's just a beautiful part of Central Park. It's a very touristy area, but even, you know, me as somebody who's lived in New York for quite a while now, I could still appreciate it even though it is very touristy and can be a little bit difficult to get through at times. But essentially, it's... It's called the mall, but it's not like a shopping mall. It's just a a, a large, I guess you could kind of call it like an, not an alley. It's just a big pathway that's lined with these big, beautiful old oak trees or elm trees. I don't even know what they are. Uh, and it's this huge pathway. There's park benches and statues and sculptures um, on either side. And it runs for probably like, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile through through Central Park, and then at the far end of it, the, the northernmost end, is a fountain and a few more statues, and then there's, you can kind of go down to the water, there's like a stairway, which I didn't, obviously I can't introduce that into this scene at all, but I, I really liked the idea of having this really long pathway that's lined with uh, statues and and uh, sculptures and fountains and, and places to sit and relax. Uh, so that's kind of where my my thought process was with this one, and this I just I had only just built this actually a couple days ago at the point of, of recording this, and I'm still kind of settling back into getting into this game. So I've, I've been kind of rusty, which is kind of funny to say that that can even happen in you know a, a simulation game like this. But I've been feeling a bit rusty getting back into it. So my, my planning was a little bit poor, um, I will admit, if you, <laughs> if you paid attention uh, when I first laid out that pathway and the entryway there, it's not quite centered, it's not lined up, I, I really didn't even, I didn't think about it, I was just anxious to, to jump in and start adding some of the details that, that I had already pre-planned in my head, and I didn't really think about lining them up properly. Uh, so at this point here, I'm trying to find a good, a good texture for the ground, and there's a lot of options. Uh, I can't see what these are. I think FX is what, what that says on my, my little preview monitor here. FX brick and FX cobblestone. Really cool textures. Um, definitely another something you should you should get off of the download station. Really, really high quality textures. I mean, obviously you just saw a few of them there. Uh, really nice for this sort of thing. And um, the one thing, so right at this point, the one thing that drives me nuts about trains textures sometimes and sometimes not so much is the bleed. Uh, it kind of works in this scene where the grass kind of bleeds into the brick because it, you can kind of imagine that it's like overgrowth a little bit. But when it comes to like pavement, like asphalt and stuff like that, it gets a little bit irritating. But anyway, I still wanted to sort of delineate like where the walking path is versus where like the gardens, I guess, would be. So I added this stone wall, uh, which I've used several times before uh, throughout this build to use as like a uh, as like a curb. Um, I use that and just drop it, just lower it, lower the asset into the grid a little tiny bit, and you'll get sort of this, uh, the top edge, uh, which looks a lot like a curb, and it's really nice for sort of, you know, dividing your scenes a little tiny bit when you do it right. Um, and uh, to further break up, I guess, the edge or hide the edge in some places, I, I place down some more of these beautiful flowering trees, uh, and I think I get into some, some regular flower gardens as well. 
uh, which which are really really nice. I actually wish there was some better flower beds. I didn't honestly I didn't look in on the download station for anything else. I kind of just went through the asset list that I have. So admittedly, there might be some better flower assets on the download station, but. Uh, these are the ones that I picked, and I thought that that would look pretty nice to to sort of line the the side of the pathway with uh, with a little, just a couple of flowers. Um, obviously, some some bigger flower gardens or something like that would be a little bit nicer. Um, but I think that these get the job done. You're not going to really be over here too frequently, I don't think. It's pretty far away from the train tracks. It's just a nice way to fill in uh, a large piece of real estate and uh, you know get some get some screenshots here and there and, and make it look kind of nice. So this is the final clip uh, of this segment before we get into the cinematics. And at this point, I'm just trying to populate the area with a few more trees. I didn't want to fill it in too much because I wanted it to feel more like a park and less like a forest. Uh, so I only put a few trees here and there and I've added a few houses just to sort of wrap up the scene. Uh, and then that's it. That's why I ran out of time to uh, to shoot the rest of uh, to shoot any more time lapse. So uh, that's it. We're into the cinematics now and a couple announcements. All right. So I guess there's actually only one main main announcement. I have three, three. That's right. Three game keys for trains 2019 in my possession that I will be giving away in the very near future. One of which will be given away during a special live stream, which will I will announce pretty soon. Uh, and another one will be given away when I reach 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. So in order to qualify for both of those giveaways, uh, there will be a contest involved. Um, but first, you must be subscribed. And that's the most obvious thing. So make sure you're subscribed so you can qualify to, to actually win. Um, but the details for the giveaway will be announced in the next video, as well as on my Facebook and Twitter and probably Instagram accounts. I don't necessarily have the the details at the moment, but the uh, the live stream one will be given away uh, during a Trains 2019 live stream. Uh, I don't have a date set for that, but I will announce that once I have it. Uh, and then the other game key will be given out during my 5,000 subscriber special. And that'll be during a special video. And I haven't planned everything out exactly, but it's going to require uh, a little bit of trivia, and I have to come up with the questions and figure out exactly how I'm going to run the contest. Um, but that video will be released uh, once I hit 5,000. So obviously, I can't give you a date for that. But once we hit that that milestone, uh, that will be another giveaway. So two game keys will be given away then, and I haven't decided what to do with the third one. Also, during the 5,000 subscriber special, which should be rapidly approaching. I'm at like 4,400 or something like that at the time of this recording. In addition to the Trains 2019 game key, I have some goodies from Jointed Rail that I will also be giving away for second and third place. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy the content that's on my channel, make sure you leave a like and hit the subscribe button. And if you're interested, you can become a patron for just a dollar a month. Any support is appreciated. Uh, these videos do take some time. I do enjoy it and I love giving back to you guys. So anyway, with that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.